Good evening, everyone. Hey, how are you? Thank you for joining me. I'm KP Carter, the Literacy Whisperer, and it's 7.30, so you know what time it is. Yes, it is time, hey, for the Lit Life series, the next episode. Episode 12, as a matter of fact. So everyone's popping in. Hey, how are you? And I want you to do me a favor, okay? Listen really carefully. <laughs> Please share this with your friends, okay? You're not going to want to miss it. This is going to be a great conversation tonight, and I don't want you or your friends to miss a single word. We're going to be talking about things that parents can do to help their children become better readers, and we're going to share some new books and some insights about literacy. So take a minute and share. I'm going to give you a moment to share. I'm watching my clock <laughs> and I'm watching you. I might not be able to see you, but I know I I know that you're sharing. Because you're my friend and you want to know what to do about literacy with your child. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing. And I think I saw my guest pop in. Um, I thought I saw her name go by. So while you're still sharing, please, my special guest for tonight, just request to join and I will certainly Click you right on in. You're sharing, right? Hey. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. Miss Naomi, did you request to join? I know I'm giving everybody a chance to, to share. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm here. Sure. <laughs> you know, it's been 12 weeks and I'm still <laughs> learning to make sure I do things just right. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, everyone. Thanks for being Hi, here. I am KP Carter, the Literacy Whisperer, <laughs> and you have the wonderful opportunity to meet an awesome author tonight. My guest tonight is Miss Naomi Dunson White, Miss Naomi V. Dunson White. Yes. Yes. And we're going to be talking about so many things that you're going to want that's going to help your child. So stay tuned. Make sure you're sharing. And let's just get started. I shared. I shared. Very good. Very good. Very good. I shared too. So now. Just had one more little chair I had to do. Yes. Now, um, the Lit Life series is just for all of you parents and interested adults out there who want to promote and see children do better at, to become better readers. Bottom line. That's the bottom line. And I have 35 years of experience in education, so I just know that Parents just want to, their child to succeed. I never met a parent that didn't want their child to do better. So that's what this is all about. And let's just get started. Okay. Welcome to my wonderful guest, Miss Naomi. And she's an awesome author. And she's also something else special, which I'm going to let her tell you about. <laughs> so... Why don't you just share with everyone, Miss Naomi, who you are. Tell us about yourself. Okay. I am Naomi Dunson-White. <clears throat> I am a children's author. I have authored one book for adults, and actually it's on your topic. It's called, Is Your Child an Excellent Reader? And that is for parents, caregivers, adults, who are trying to do exactly what you said, trying to help their child um, achieve and exceed in reading. So I love reading. 
I love children. I think one of the most important things you can do in life is influence a child to become a book lover and a reader. I think that changes everything. Um, that's been true in my life. It's been true in the lives of my children. My grandchildren were all readers, you know, all early readers, early learners. And um, that's something I'm proud of, and, you know, in our family. <clears throat> There's definitely a thirst for knowledge that is expressed through reading. So I'm also an editor and uh, I am blessed to be your editor. Yay. <laughs> and I'm excited to share with everyone about a relaunch for uh, Lizzie B behind you. <clears throat> and uh, that's been a joy uh, working with you, KP. It really has. So um, I am all about everything books and everything BIPOC, you know, Black, Indigenous, people of color. Um, representation in books is something that I take very seriously. I can get an attitude about that really quick, quickly. <laughs> and um, I want all children to uh, feel that they are important enough to be represented in the books that they read. I think it's just extremely important and research has proven it out that it affects them emotionally and psychologically, you know, their self-esteem, their self-confidence, their hope for the future, their sense of belonging in this world and their sense of purpose, which is also one of my, um, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, but that's like a soapbox issue for me. <laughs> so yes, all of those things are important. Um, it's a part of my purpose in life. And I've now built that, built my life around that yes so you know what i'm going to just jump right into that part about purpose why did you decide to write about purpose and helping children explore their their path uh there's a couple of reasons and i think uh the main reason is that i felt it was an assignment from god for me to do that and um, that is something that i struggled with in my life I've always wanted to serve. I have a servant's heart. You know, my, my heart is to help people and to serve. Obviously, teachers are like that, you know. Um, and I, I did good things as far as a career. And I was able to help and able to serve and able to teach and inspire. But it wasn't the thing. And so there is a difference. And if no one is talking to you about it or teaching you about purpose, you flounder. You just do. You just do. Most people do. I will say that. Um, if you are not getting direction in that area, um, you may know what you want to do, but you may not know what you're called to do. And that is purpose. And I see we ask children all the time, what do you want to be when you grow up? But it's more than that. It's what's in here. What's in your heart? What do you feel that's driving you? What do you feel the gifts are that you have to give to the world? What makes you different? You know, what makes you light up? So that's why oh. I wrote the book. <laughs> and the other, the, the catalyst for it was, uh, it was during the time of the George Floyd protests. And there was so much chaos and so much vitriol and just the politics and the hatred and just everyone was in angst every day, especially black people. Yes. Right. And um, I was watching the news one day and I just was overcome emotionally, literally to the point of tears. And I felt, you know, if I can feel this, I feel this hatred. I feel this fear. I feel this uncertainty about the future. So as old as I am, if I'm feeling this and it's impacting me the way that it is, what are our babies feeling? And that's what did it. And that's what I, I felt inspired. I went right away and started writing. And through all of my uh, emotion, that's what came out was this book. Yes. And I think the book title is Why Am Why? I Here? Why Am I Here? A Child's Book About Purpose. Yes. yes. It is very important to, to nurture a child's desire because they might say things, oh, I want to be... A fireman. fireman. Yeah. I want to be a circus clown, you know. But when you're digging down with them to find out what it is inside of them that's driving them. Yes. And those things change over time. I know 
for my own one of my own children, they they always wanted to be they had a, their eye on a path to do one thing. And then maybe about four years ago, when he was close to forty, all that changed. Yeah. So but you still have to nurture that. You have you to do. You do. And yeah, I think the older you get, the closer you want to be to what you're called to do. Yeah. You can explore when you're younger. Some, and a lot of times, for, my, for me, for example, I had to do what I had to do sometimes. I had to work and do, you know, what was available to me and move myself, you know, as I went to school at night. Though All of those, you know, things, staying up at night, trying to raise your children and going to school and studying and working during the day. That is all difficult, but that's what happens. Unfortunately, uh, sometimes when you veer off the path, you know, even yeah. though you're doing good, like I said, you it's not that you're doing bad things. It's just you're that's not right. doing the thing that is meant for you. That is so true. Talk a little bit about your, your other book, Jahari the Great. Jahari the Great. That was my first. Yes. Very special to me. Um, Johari, the, the book title is my grand's, my first grandson's name, my oldest. Um, it's a Swahili name and it means jewel. And I wrote this book as a gift for him, actually. Uh, he's 22 years old now. <laughs> but I wrote this book originally as a gift for him just for his birthday. And it just it just grew into more. So it never ended up being a gift for him for his birthday. <laughs> so I gave what him the book. Mean, this day, <laughs> Did I hear you say that your grandson is 22? Oh, oh, oh yeah. my God. Oh, you, you, you have the secret. We'll have to talk offline. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk later. About. What is the secret? <laughs> yes. I didn't mean to get you all. Oh, that's okay. But this book, um, it elevates, how can I say this? There are so many um, themes in this book. The main theme, the surface theme, the obvious theme is about a black child <clears throat> who realizes his gift. He's inspired yeah. by his teacher to write. She's teaching the class to use their imagination to write. So he does that. He writes a great story, he enters into the contest. And the special thing about the book is that it's a story within the story. So. As you're reading the story, Johari is on stage having to read his story to the school. And um, so I wanted uh, so much, you know, so many messages here. The village mm -hmm. concept of raising children, there's a mystery and Johari needs help to solve the mystery. So he goes to his community members. He knows them by name. You know, they're, everyone is involved. He has a great relationship with his father, which dispels that myth about black fathers. Um, the community is positive. It dispels that myth about the black community. And there's a positive relationship with his teacher and his friends. So some of the friends are competing in the contest, but they are cheering for each other. You know, and it's about setting goals, relationships, believing in yourself and discovering again, purpose, what's inside. <clears throat> oh my gosh, so many important messages that our children need. So mm -hmm. many. Ugh. So now you have shared so many gems so far, mm -hmm. but I wonder if you could zero in on two or three things that you would tell parents. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to know what can they do. <clears throat> so what two or three things can you suggest? For reading? For reading yes, excellence? For reading, yes. Um, I would suggest make everything about reading. I know that sounds corny or trite, but it's true. When my children were growing up, I turned everything into a reading adventure. I don't care if it was the back of a magazine or the back of the cereal box or the signs on the street or something hanging in a window, the labels on their clothes. I made everything like, oh, look, these are letters. I wonder what the, oh, what does this say? You know, we did everything as far as reading. Um, I made it fun. Mm -hmm. I did little contests when children are old enough to put the sounds together. You know, just little little fun things. One of the, um, the best suggestions that I heard was from one of my closest friends who's been teaching. She just retired after 32 years. The sticky notes. 
all over the house. Yes. All over the house. Because you think that they can't read it, and they can't even as young, but they will start to memorize those letters. Right. And start to associate the sound with the letter. And you'll be surprised. I mean, I think parents will be amazed at how that works. So if, if the cups are in the cabinet, put a sticky note, a cup. That's right. You know, they know, they'll learn cups are in there, mm -hmm. right? So you have a spoon, write it out. Now, not big, long words, okay? You know, five letters and under. <laughs> yes. Start. Five letters and under. But yes, things like that. Um, things that they, your your shoe, your boot, you know, put sticky notes where all of those things are and mm -hmm. children will begin to associate what they see with what they hear and what they say exactly exactly and to just take that sticky note of a bit further when children are older we're asking them to read longer books and we want them to read the entire chapter and tell us exactly what happened in the chapter well that's not always easy so those sticky notes come in really handy because they could just jot down a few things, a few things. about the page. Yeah. Stick that on that page and yeah. keep on reading. So sticky notes that are Yeah, and it's fun. Yes. And get the color get the colored <laughs> ones. Make it right. make it very colorful. And I see um Fatmata is saying she'll have to start do that with Saj when he yeah. gets older. Yeah, don't wait until he gets older. Do it now. now. He doesn't have to know what those letters are now, but he'll continue to see them and start associating them with the item. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm just looking to see what other people are saying. Hopefully, I exactly. Yeah, that's that's a great a great. Yes, yeah, a lot and of just, people yeah. think 100 because it is so true. Mm -hmm. You are built. Uh, creating the building blocks for the early learning, early reading. Right. And that's what you're doing, getting right. them to see those words and those letters. Yes. And a lot of times, when, when even when you're reading with them, and you think that they are reading the book back with you when they're very young, well, right. they have to memorize, which is the beginning. Yeah. It is the beginning of, of reading. So. Right. And a lot of times, um, like Dr. Sheila, we all know, know and love Dr. Sheila. Yeah. I, she contributed to my book, and I just, it's one of the favorite parts of the book. She's talking about early communication is really the first step to reading and to just talk, constantly talk to your baby, even the little baby who has no clue about anything, <laughs> but they're hearing, you know. And, of course, if there's a hearing issue, we would do something different. The sticky notes still work there. Yes. But even just saying to the baby, okay, well, I'm going to go do the laundry now. And then after the laundry, mm -hmm. we're going to take a nap, whatever. The child can hear. They may exactly. not be able to spell, obviously. But associating the sounds, like I said, what they're hearing with what they're seeing, it is really the uh, a strong, that makes a strong foundation. It does. It really does. And tell us the name of that book again. Uh, is your, your child is your child an excellent reader? Unleashing your child's genius potential, and I kind of dispel what everyone thinks genius means. It has nothing to do with an IQ number. It really doesn't. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to show that we all have genius within us. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we certainly do. Yeah. So please tell us what's next for you. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. So I have a couple of things, uh, a couple of things up my sleeve. So uh, the first thing, uh, next month, I am going to be collaborating with a black bookseller, and I'm going to be hosting a summer reading contest for kids. And um, my books will be downloadable for free on the site. That will be their first entry. But we're trying to promote children going to the library and reading over the summer. We'll be giving away um, gift certificates for books, gift cards, free books. It's going to be great. Amazon gift cards. So we're, um, we're going to be announcing that next week. I'll have the flyer posted. It's for, the month of, yeah, it's for the month of July. And it is for K through 5. Anyone can enter from wherever you are. I will be um, receiving all of the entries. They just have to read it, but we're going to suggest some books. Um,
she's frozen because sometimes you can keep talking and it's like, oh my goodness. Okay, so I think she's coming back. So as I said, I'm relaunching the book because I wanted to refresh the story. I talk about what it was like to be a child in the 1960s. And Lizzie is an eight-year-old. She and her ordinary family are living through an extraordinary time period. So I wanted to highlight all of the things that were happening during that time. And you're going to see more of that in the re when the book comes out again this summer. And when I say an extraordinary time, it's almost as if time is things, you know how the saying goes, what goes around comes around? Well, in the summer of 1967 in Newark, New Jersey, there was unrest. Some people call it a riot. Some people call it a revolution. Some people call it a rebellion. It depends on whatever your experience was or what you have read about that time period. I lived during that time period. And I wanted to show just ordinary people living their lives. Kids were still having fun. They're still playing outside. But the backdrop is the unrest that was happening. And if you don't know a lot about Lizzie B yet, you're going to learn about her. I've been putting little clips on, uh, posting little clips about her to show some things. Oh, she's coming back. Thank you. And Lizzie B is smart as a whip. She loves to play jacks. She loves to jump rope. And <laughs> did I mention she loves to be the center of attention? And most of all, she loves basketball, too. That's because her dad was a big New York Knicks fan. Because at that time, the New York Knick Knickerbockers, I mean, they were something else. Are you uh, watching the, by the way, watching the NBA Finals? Oh, I digress. Anyway, so Lizzie had this love for basketball, too. Well, she'll be back. I'm sure she will be back. You know, I write, oh, it says she was unable to join. I don't know what that's about. I know she's coming back. I know we're going to get this worked out. <laughs> so when I write children's books, and many, I see a lot of my fellow authors watching tonight. Thank you so much for joining. I write so that children can have that windows and mirror experience. I'm sure many of you have heard about that. For Windows, I want them to be able to see out into the world and to be able to get an understanding of what other people are like. And to that fosters acceptance of other people. And the mirrors, of course, you want to be able to see yourself in print. You want It is empowering when children can see themselves in books. And I know, well, I'm pretty sure that when kids read Summertime with Lizzie B. Hayes, they'll get that windows and, and mirrors experience. They'll see themselves in Lizzie, or they'll see other people who remind them of Lizzie or her cousins, Shushu and Mookie, or some of the other kids in the neighborhood. And to celebrate the relaunch, I'm going to have some special things for all of my readers very soon. It's going to be this summer. I put a poll on my uh, in on my Instagram. I think it was on my Instagram today. I put a poll. When do you want to see the relaunch? <laughs> July or August? So I haven't checked the stats on that yet, but the relaunch is coming this summer. We're working very hard to get that book out to you, and I know that you're going to love it and enjoy it. So let's just recap a little bit while we're waiting for Miss Naomi to come back. I have faith that she's coming back. Let's recap. Jahari the Great is a... Oh, now I see another message here. Question. 
Can you please? In okay, let's see if how I can. All right, let's see. All right. She asked me to invite her to join. And you know me and technology. And I think I'm able to do it. <laughs> so I just sent her an invite. And I think that it will work. And yes, it worked. I believe it worked. Yeah, that's weird. Wow. <laughs> I was there the whole time. And I Were kept you? Saying, yes, I kept sending the request and it just was like I could I, I kept accepting the request and it just, then it once it said unable to join i said oh yeah. boy well we'll just keep talking and I'm i know so she's sorry. coming back i have no idea you just froze and and uh it just yes. yeah it just ended anyway <laughs> i was just recapping some of the wonderful things that you were sharing with us about your Harvey the great and, and purpose and uh encouraging children to use their imagination and things that parents can do to propel their child to success that's right because reading really is the key there's nothing that a child, that anyone can do um, without being able to read and read well. I agree. And to be able to critically read because that's real important, especially in, with all of that, what's going on in our world today. We need our children to be able to think. Absolutely. Think critically and make wise decisions. So I am not sure where you left off. But oh, I that's okay. I heard you talking <laughs> just, about Lizzie, and I'm excited about yes. that. We can talk about that. <laughs> yes, I was just sharing how uh, I just was wanting, my desire was to refresh the story. Yeah. So I talked a lot about that and the, the extraordinary time period of the 1960s and what it was like. And dispelling myths, you talked a, uh, a little bit about that with your books. Absolutely. Even though there was unrest during that time, families were still loving. Mm -hmm. Children were still playing outside, being cared for, and being nurtured. And when people hear the word Newark, New Jersey, a lot of times they get turned off. Even today with all of the urban yeah. renewal that's going on. But I'm here to tell you, I am from Newark, New Jersey. And well, I it told was you. Wonderful Patterson, place to grow. So. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not too far, but you're right. It does have that negative connotation, um, you know. Yes. And I, you know, with us working, to, I, I, it's been a joy working with you on Lizzie. And as I was expressing to you, with the children growing up today, and then with them having their hands on the books that actually teach the truth, you know, that is not tainted with one side's perspective. It's important to tell our stories, us tell our mm -hmm. stories. And the children today, um, one of the, the benefits that they don't have, like we did uh, being in, in this age group, um, I'm an East Coast girl straight through. I'm not Southern at all. I, you know, I have relatives that are from the Tennessee, the South, but I'm not, I'm not Southern. So I don't have that experience that I can say, oh yeah, my mother went through remember the things mm -hmm. that our parents went through exactly. we remember segregation and those things that our parents talked to us about yes. so it's it's not too far removed from us but the younger generation you know like my kids i can't tell them that i went to a separate drinking fountain because i didn't right you know what i'm saying and then their kids it's so far removed so sometimes i feel that our children aren't feeling the real impact of what happened to us what we had to go through and what our people survived you know so stories like lizzie it helps with that it helps to refresh and that's why we decided to refresh and relaunch it helps to refresh the truth told by us about what happened with us that's right. So I think that's very important, and I applaud you for that. And and it's an enjoyable story. It's funny. It's fun. It's tragic in some ways, but it's also hopeful. And it shows how the Black community took care of the Black community, even in the midst of chaos. 
Thank you so much. And it really, really was a pleasure. It is a pleasure to work with you. Mm -hmm. You push me. Oh, I'll push you. You know that. You, you push me. <laughs> Yes, yes, indeed. So, do you have anything else you'd like to share? Um, I just want to make sure did I answer any questions? If anybody had any questions, I'm so yeah, sorry. I, I cut out. Hey, yes. Hey. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I oh cut my out. gosh, we have so many. Lots of hearts going up. Oh, Lots that's of good. Hearts. hearts are good. Yes. Hearts are always good. Hearts are always good, and then we had a lot of 100 percent going on yeah, because good. they know stories about us for us Bye. but it's also for others sure, to know sure. the truth about us absolutely that's absolutely. The so i i hope that people get behind this relaunch and uh, purchase this book for their kids mid, uh, middle school age or you know some younger kids really are good readers and they can they can grasp that if they're reading with an older child or a parent um even adults will like the book and then you know you have more to come with the lizzie b hayes series so yeah i'm excited for you i'm gonna be right there with you uh you know helping spread the word and um i'm proud of it so as long as you're proud of it that's that's what's important i am proud of it and i see my other my other part of my village in here my writing coach oh hey coach Yes. Hey, yeah, Coach. Thanks for joining. <laughs> yeah. So this has been a wonderful discussion. I'm so glad you were here. I'm sorry about the little glitch that we had, oh, but we worked okay. it out. That's we okay. worked it out. Absolutely. So I hope you enjoyed tonight. Come on back next week, everybody. It's going to be another fantastic author. This is and great. until next time, I wish you love, laughter, and literacy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye.